What's up guys, it's going to be doing a early October check-in uh, for the YouTube. Uh, feel free to like, share, follow, check out the Patreon, patreon.com backslash running gun tarot. All one, all one word, I'll put the website link below so you can find it easy. Um, reach out for one-on-one -on -one reading, $2 a minute or $5 a question. Um, let's see, hope you guys are doing well. I do have the love and money readings um, on the YouTube page already so check the back catalog they're up there for October to mid-October um, and then I believe I have bonus material on the patreon so definitely check that out as well um, regarding love and money um, what else can I say um, as always feel free to reach out for one-on-one -on -one. Uh, that can be done over video chat uh, messenger, phone, email, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I'm looking at the planetary alignments here uh, from tarot.com. Feel free to check out that website. I like to use that to check out the current planetary alignments. Let's see. Spirit of gratitude, joy, love, and light, highest possible messages for those that resonate, those that are watching this. We have the sun in Libra. Um, let's pull a card for that. Libra is about kind of marriage, partnerships, relationships, contracts, business partnerships, the balancing, the equality, uh, obviously with the skills of Libra, interpersonal style. So the sun is in Libra until October 22nd. Um, I know Mercury is in retrograde until October 18th, so feel free to check out the Patreon. We talk a lot about that uh, in regards to the last video that I did just post. Um, so there's going to be heavy emphasis on balance, uh, reciprocity, reciprocation. Obviously, I always advise staying present. Um, as what's being on the scale, uh, weight on the scales is, you know, some say a feather in the heart, meaning, you know, what are you holding uh, in your heart? What are your burdens? What are your baggages? Or I like to say it's the mind versus the heart because the mind tends to be that kind of logical, systematic mechanism that keeps tabs and wants to keep score and tally whereas the heart is for me nowadays how I'm reading is just a metaphor for presence and um, you know because wherever you're at your heart's there you know your heart's not in the past your heart's not in the future it's here and now uh, and it just kind of leads to the fact that the future is an illusion past is an illusion all you can do is be here and now so you might as well be empowered and stay here presently star card in the reverse is wanting to come out for the sun in Libra this is rolling up your sleeves, being able to do a lot of emotional healing. This is Aquarius energy. This is powered by Uranus. Uranus, the planet of surprises, is in Taurus until 2025, uh, July 2025. Let's see, we have Jupiter, Saturn still in Aquarius until 2021, respectively. Jupiter in Aquarius and 2023. Uh, Saturn and Aquarius. I think Jupiter and Saturn are currently retro. Somebody comment below and if you could confirm that. Um, yeah, so Star Card in the Reverse could be a good opportunity to heal um, some past road bumps or hiccups in regards to relationship dynamics. It doesn't have to be romantic. Obviously, it could be platonic business relationships as well. Moon and Virgo until Tuesday tomorrow at the time of this recording, the 5th. Chariot in the reverse, in the reverse, feeling like there's not forward progress or movement. I feel as though that may pass. Ace of Pentacles in the upright. This is a new opportunity or incoming offer. Um, after the moon leaves Virgo, Mercury in Libra until the twenty, till twenty twenty one, November fifth, twenty twenty one. King of Pentacles in reverse might be feeling as though you're not able to communicate um, that need for equilibrium in regards to pentacles, finances, resources, money, things of that nature. It's almost as if there's like a lack of being able to communicate your needs or maybe you're feeling like you're not getting some correspondence, maybe you're feeling like you're not getting some incoming orders or calls or something of that nature. Again, you can chalk it up to Mercury and retrograde until um, October 18th. You might be seeing this uh, move a little bit more forward uh, after the 18th and probably full swing well into November 5th. Uh, but again, more of that talk 
uh, on the Patreon. Feel free to check that out. Only three dollars a month to, to subscribe. Excuse me for exclusive content, weekly content on the Patreon. Um, so check that out. There's also special reading rates. Uh, I believe it's normally it's two two dollars a minute. I believe if you subscribe um, on the Patreon, it's a dollar a minute. So that's a huge huge deal. Uh, Six of Wands in the reverse, wanting to come out for Venus and Scorpio. Scorpio having to do with sex, magic, the taboo, the unspoken, death, intimacy, taxes, finances. Um, I'm reading off an astrological chart off of Google, so you can pull that up and see what all the sectors are of the ast uh, astrological natal chart. So Venus is love, money, desire, relationships, and Scorpio. So you might be highlighting or emphasizing a special focus on um, intimacy uh, triggers uh, Venus has been in Scorpio since September 10th and she's in there until October 7th so it's coming up actually uh, by the end of this week uh, at the time of this recording and then moving into Sagittarius which is more of an expansive fun less heavy energy more joyful playful fiery energy uh, traveling for the holidays possibly as well uh, Venus again desires so so being in Scorpio could be highlighting your desires uh, where you're watering uh, with your energy and attention um, could be focusing on the long-term assets loans inheritances joint ventures financial goals um, as well kind of setting yourself up for victory in the long term you'll find yourself through this window of time uh, Mars and Libra. So yeah, there's a personal victory on that front, though, though, with the Six of Wands in the reverse. So it's not all deep, dark, gloom and doom or heavy. Mars and Libra. Now we have the Seven of Wands in the upright. So this is sticking to your guns, fighting for what you believe in. Mars, the planet of action. In Libra, again, we talked about more of that equanimity, quality, and relationships. Could be a relationship with yourself as well um, until October 30th. Okay, so yeah, sticking to your guns, fighting for what you believe in. Let's get more on the Libra relational aspect of it. <clears throat> Eight of Cups in the upright, walking away. Almost as if knowing when to no longer fight here. Um, Ace of Swords in the upright, this is a new start, clarity, victory, uh, justice. Um, you don't want to fight too much, though, with the Mars and Libra aspect. I'm getting that there's kind of this universal justice. It's almost as if when you walk away, uh, that's how you really win, as opposed to fighting when you fight. That throws you off of your divine timing with the temperance in the reverse. So something to keep in mind um, as Mars is in Libra until, again, October 30th. Okay, let's move over to Jupiter in Aquarius. Let's see if we can get a card for that. We got the Three of Pentacles in the reverse coming out of partnership. Could be a company, could be a business. Um, disaster averted here. Okay, Jupiter's in Aquarius until December 2021. So this December the 28th to be specific. Falling out energy could be again more of a platonic partnership type feel. Maybe something wasn't a good match. Maybe you're wanting to clean the slate for the new year. Uh, Jupiter, the planet of luck, abundance, expansion in the sign of Aquarius, the quirky sign of Aquarius, futuristic, um, technologically based, humanitarians, uh, humanitarianism groups of people. Um, so if you're not finding that you're with the right uh, group of people, this could be a, a Interesting restart um, as Jupiter moves into Pisces, or no, excuse me, uh, Capricorn. Um, after the 28th of December, Capricorn more of a masculine energy, hard nose, you know, pursuing, achieving their goals at all costs. Uh, not as cutthroat sounding, but willing to kind of go the extra mile and effort to achieve their goals. Um, the Devil card in the upright for Jupiter and Aquarius wanted to come out also with the Six of Pentacles in reverse. Devil card in the upright is kind of staying in a negative, toxic environment. I think hence the falling out, knowing when to leave if it's a work situation or a humanitarian group, volunteering. 
Uh, Six of Pentacles in reverse, maybe you're not being acknowledged, which kind of interestingly enough, the Jupiter energy segueing into the Capricorn, Capricorn 10th house, you know, general, being known more so for, you know, your notoriety in the public domain, what you're known for. So this might be venturing into a more solo effort. It doesn't have to be, but with a special emphasis on accolades, recognition that you feel that you deserve, that you weren't getting with this Jupiter and Aquarius energy. Um, this window of energy from uh, July to December 2021. Um, that's around the time when things were kind of starting to open up more and more after this whole lockdown period. Saturn in Aquarius, let's look at December tw uh, 2020 to March 2023. This is more blocks, inhibitors, restrictions. Let's see, we have the Queen of Wands in the upright, Director Chair Energy. Taking the lead, restraints, constraints, usually lessons that you have to learn with this energy until 2023. More on the home front. Okay, not being constrained to the home front. Um, being more integrated publicly again again I think just broad stroke generalities with Saturn and Aquarius um, being disciplined enough to kind of get out from this hermit in the reverse energy which is more so of being kind of a hermit crab ironically enough even though it's in the reverse just more of a getting out there putting yourself out in new experiences um, we've talked ad nauseum about Uranus and Taurus um, Neptune in Pisces is interesting because it's in its home sign of Pisces. Neptune is dreams, fantasy, Pisces being the energy of kind of the other side, spirituality, good awakening energy from uh, 2012 to 2025, indeed, uh, spans a decade. Um, being able to salvage uh, things that you feel that you may have lost, uh, interpersonal connections with the Five of Cups in the upright, focusing emphasis on yourself. Again, we're all doing the self-love thing, full swing nowadays. Um, could be the heartbreak of not attaining that fantasy or that dream. Some people negatively, you know, are approaching their fantasies and dreams, trying to manifest their realities with this cutthroat win at all costs energy. Um, I always like to advise being emotionally receptive to the here and now, um, making the best of, you know, what's here and now, as opposed to kind of like, at all costs trying to manifest you know something that's very shallow i think you want to kind of start to tune into what's the feeling that you want to feel um, but even then it could be somewhat of a price to pay because you have to be a person that carries that uh feeling so little little um uh you know tempered efforts and um the emotional side of manifesting as well so you're tuning into the end feeling that you want to feel or tune into like feeling whole complete fulfilled abundant things of that nature um that could be kind of tiresome as well um if you're constantly doing that throughout your day versus just kind of putting your energies down water reaching its level and just honestly authentically genuinely being and resonating in the energy of, of where you're currently at not trying to fight to change something within yourself so it's a two-edged sword depends on you know what your personal belief is pluto and capricorn more of a rebirth regeneration and energy this has been since the obama administration pluto has been in capricorn since 2008 it's going to remain until 2023 um, we're kind of revamping our personal identity as, as a nation, if you're in the States or as, as a globe. Um, birth, death, transformation, enlightenment, rebirth with Pluto energy, um, where your power dynamic is, uh, expressing Capricorn, a masculine energy, uh, definitely generational, where we're all kind of like trying to play daddy. Uh, if you're a woman nowadays, it's like a hot trend where it's like, call her daddy. And if you're a man, you're actually kind of trying to do the opposite. You're trying to kind of smooth out those rough edges with Pluto and Capricorn. This kind of power and transformation in the sector of notoriety, which you're known for, 
um, Capricorn, that masculine energy. It's about public recognition, um, notoriety, uh, public image, reputation, status, goals, structure, long-term, fathers, experts, fame. Things of that nature is very masculine energy as opposed to the counterpart of uh, Cancerian fourth house in astrology in the astrological birth chart. So it's kind of interesting because you see like the feminization of men, you know, but then Pluto's in Capricorn. Um, and you could say it's the ma masculinization of, of women, uh, if that's a word. Um, very topsy-turvy. But nonetheless, okay, let's see. Let's go straight pure tarot now and see spirit if there's anything that needs to be uh, said or heard or learned. Spirit of gratitude, your love and light has possible messages at this time. I'm being a little self-conscious because my hair all of a sudden wanted to get real big. Uh, I started playing with it, so now I got the fro going in full swing, but it could be worse. All right, less about me, more about you. Okay, Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. This could be an energy of being uh, out of work, being unemployed, not being able to work, or not being able to employ your skilled craftsmanship or labor, moving ahead emotionally solo uh, with the Five of Cups in reverse. Um, to what extent? Okay, roadblocks turn into stepping stones, challenging, objectionable energy, as in like objection, Your Honor. I object to this. Um, maybe you're not finding it satisfactory to move forward emotionally solo to some extent, in particular as is into as to excuse me finances, resources, wealth is what the Pentacles represent. Um, not working with others. Uh, let's see what else can I say here. Holding on to what you know. Okay, what's tried and true. Um, to a positive effect with the sun card in the upright, being playful with what you know, as opposed to you know taking things so seriously. There's going to be some setbacks. There's going to be some retrogrades. You can't take these things seriously with the sun card in the upright. Do your best. Cut yourself a break. Knight of Cups in the reverse is watering yourself with self-love, harmony, happiness, as opposed to kind of being cold to the whole game of life. With the Queen of Cups in reverse. She's not at her best. Uh, she's taking the setbacks too seriously with the chariot in reverse. Lack of forward victory, forward progress and movement. Lover's card in the reverse. Could be feeling like you're knocked off a peg, knocked down a peg, falling from grace. But this is just the ego reacting. What it's doing is setting you up for a long-term forward stability, which is what you want as opposed to a quick victory. Uh, this energy can't last uh, whether it's being unemployed or not being able to employ your skill, craftswork, craftsmanship, or skilled labor, um, things of that nature. Coming out of heartbreak, sadness, sorrow, loss, freeing yourself. See, all this great energy, Nine of Pentacles in the reverse, which I don't think is going to remain there. Um, because at least you're going to be able to work. It points to the eight in the up right now. So for all intents and purposes, this eight gets turned right side up when this Nine of Pentacles is here. Because at least... You're able to make a living and work. Nine of Pentacles does speak to lack of um, independence financially, but again, to the extent that maybe you're not where you want to be financially free, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're destitute living in your mom's basement. Um, but again, I think this is more so speaking to a time frame of not taking setbacks or retrogrades too seriously. Don't worry, things are in the works, things are in the mix. You're going to be hot to trot soon enough with the Knight of Wands in the upright. Um, and it's going to kind of be steady and consistent for you financially. This is a resume energy, Nine of Cups in the upright, emotional satisfaction. You might want to put your resume out there to kind of increase your chances of getting this Nine of Pentacles again. Uh, financial uh, independence when it's in the upright. But put a pump, uh, pump the brakes on the on the expectation of timeliness with the Knight of Swords in reverse, especially as we're in retrograde till the 18th of October. We're hitting the holidays. Probably not the best measure for, um, you know, having a, a total kind of hit uh, as far as your career. Um, but again, not getting energies of, of destitution. Um, more so an energy of just 
kind of finding your inner zen, peace, chill, balance here with the Two of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, everything will kind of gain momentum soon enough. Stay tried and true to what you know, your bread and butter, and then all your kind of ancillary, um, you know, tangential streams of income, if that's what we're talking about, will uh, will gain uh, kind of its, its uh, momentum underneath it itself. Okay, there will be a time for this Ace of Wands, basically. Um, I'm getting more so Sagittarius, more so holiday season, uh, if you're kind of on the independent side. Uh, but looking at, as, looking at it as, you know, more so after the holidays and the new year, if it's more so if you're on a more kind of traditional career path or trajectory, um, so to speak, um, as opposed to being self-employed. But those are the breaks. Um, that's what I have for you in general. Um, how did you work for one-on-one -on -one reading? See, this looks way better now. It doesn't look like when my hair's not acting up. Uh, <clears throat> got my little jewels on, my jewelry. Guys, feel free to reach out for one-on-one -on -one reading. Obviously, this is a broad general reading. Some cool lightning in the background. I don't know if you can't see that, but I see it in the window reflection of the mirror in my room. Um, as always, if you want more detail, in-depth reading, you got to reach out for a one-on-one, -on -one, guys. We can do it over text, chat, messenger, only $2 a minute. Email, it's $5 a question. Um, I'll give you an in-depth, thorough response as much as possible. Uh, we could do it over video, FaceTime, whatever you feel most comfortable with. It's really worth it, guys. Um, check out the Patreon website link below again uh, for special discounts and rates and, and all these kind of secret special goodies. Um, I have exclusive video uh, videos up there. Um, just posted a new one there now, so it's worth it. Go check out the Money and Love readings on the Patreon as well. Bonus content material. Only $3 a month. You'd be supporting your boy. You'd be helping the channel, helping Run and Gun after all the free content that I've been giving. Uh, Patreon is a good way to give back and subscribe and ensure that we can kind of keep this going. So I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Holler at your boy. Peace, leave comments, like, shares, follows, subscriptions, all that good stuff. Share it with friends, family, people that you might think would enjoy this content, be interested in this content, all that good stuff. Holla at your boy. Peace.